day. Today we're going to be focusing on the CAM portion of the STEM Guitar Projects Hybrid CNC class. In our previous video we looked at how to create the profile that we're going to be using to create our custom guitar body. Today we're going to be taking that profile, walking through the different steps of the CAM process. This will probably take a couple of videos. And so this first video we're going to be creating and modifying our sketch and then we're going to be creating the tooling uh, setups that we're going to need for the actual profile cutout. In the second video we're going to be taking that tooling library that we set up, creating our setups and then actually walking through that process of creating the profile and then generating the post-process code. So to begin, we've got our profile that we've created, and you can see that it's highlighted here. And so there's a couple of things that we need to do to this profile to ensure that we have a successful cut. And you can still go ahead and edit this profile. I'm still in the model tab within Fusion 360. And so if there's things that you want to continually do and you and want to update your model environment, you can go ahead and do that. But as part of this profile, I'm going to need to create a couple of extra lines. And the reason why we want to make sure that we have these lines is these are going to be used as relief cuts in our uh, profiling process. So I want to make sure that I edit my profile sketch. So I double click on it. Let me go ahead and set this up. Sometimes the mouse just doesn't cooperate. Did you ever have that happen? I'm sure you have. So we're going to go ahead and create a couple of lines. And these are going to be relief cuts. These are especially necessary if you are using a glued up body spread. If you're using one of our no profile, these are these are still recommended, highly recommended, but they're not, um, they don't need to be as long as part of that process. I'm also going to make sure that, it, that I've got profile lines that connect from the end of my uh, body profile to the end of the neck and then back across again. So I just want to make sure that I've got a clean profile process all the way along. Plus it's always good to zoom up on your profile to make sure that the lines touch and that the profile uh, relief cuts are also located appropriately. So we're going to have a relief cut going in and a relief cut going out. And again this is going to remove the material in that area and they don't have to be that long. You know, that's the other amazing thing is that these do not need to be very long. All you're doing is cutting out a little extra material so that way when the cutter comes along the, uh, the profile, it doesn't chip that uh, corner out. And it's really critical if you've got really thin corners. So as we go through this process, we also need to make sure that Let's select our body profile here at the bottom and we're going to move the slider bar uh, over to the profile area. Make sure you stop the sketch before you do this step. And so before we move the slider bar I have to choose stop sketch and then I should be able to move the slider bar on the bottom revealing the last step which is the body profile. And so I'm going to make sure that I highlight and edit the feature here. When I highlight the feature right now I've got three selected. I should only have one selected. So we're going to go ahead and unselect everything and then select just the interior portion of my body. Go to the 3D view. And you can see what happens is that it actually extrudes out the body. And that's what this last step, this hidden step, allows us to do. And this is an important step because at the very next environment with our setup, 
we're going to need to have this interior profile of our body shape created. So again you might need to review the video on this but we need to stop our sketch slide the history marker over exposing the extrusion tool edit the extrusion tool by right mouse clicking you'll get the edit feature box up make sure that there's only one selected if there's more than one selected or if you don't have the right thing selected just hit the X and then reselect the interior interior portion when you're finished you can choose OK and now you've got your guitar body profiled and you can see what it looks like in 3D and this will move us on to our next step which is actually part of the manufacturing process and so to do that we're going to move over to the model or from the model over to the manufacturing tab and our first environment that we're going to be creating is we need to create the different tool or tools that we're going to use to actually create our profile cut and in this case it's a single tool library that we need to manage now the good thing is is that once you create a tool library um, you can edit it and use it for all the different tools that you may have and I've got a tool library that I created um, already however I'm going to create a brand new one and to do this and what you'll find is that this thing is usually all rolled up so you want to right mouse click on local and create a new local tool library and so this tool library give it a name and so this tool library is going to hold all the tools that you're going to use in your lab and so once you have the lab library we're going to need to add tools to this library and the tool that we're going to start with which is our profile cutting tool is going to be a new milling tool and so with this new milling tool I'm going to go ahead and click the general tab because we're going to begin with the product description and uh, where we can use it uh, in this case we act this is going to be a quarter inch cutting tool so we're going to go to MSC and we have a product ID and it's a good idea to, to take the time and do this so that way you've got the ability to go back and order additional tools if you need them um, and you can even put in a link uh, to a website if you want to, to so that way you can link exactly to that tool and we're gonna make this as our uh, one quarter inch profile now we're not done we just filled in the general information what we need to do next is we're gonna need to go to the in, identify what type of tool this is well it's not a ball end mill we're actually going to be using a flat end mill and it's two flutes and not three and it's not high speed steel it's carbide and so this information is all found on the website of the manufacturer and so it's, it's easy enough to, to go in and gather this data to type it in and, and again I said if you take the time and do this up front with all your tools you only have to do this once once you have all the tools in your library you can then use the tools to create the different pockets and profiles that you're going to be utilizing so the length of this tool is three inches the body length is 2.08 and so this is the distance that you want to be extended from your collet to the bottom of the tool and this is a critical dimensions and so that way uh, you prevent the collet from actually um, embedding into your guitar body that's not a good thing I've seen that happen the flute length is the cutting tool uh, length and this one happens to be 1.125 and since this is a quarter inch cutter and the shaft and the diameter of the cutting tool is exactly the same the shoulder length is not critical because there is no shoulder there is no difference from the cutting tool diameter to the collet um, shaft uh, diameter 
or the collet holding shaft diameter. The other components that you can go ahead and edit, if you wanted to edit the tool holder, um, you can go ahead and do that. We're going to move on to feeds and speeds because that's the other critical component that we're going to be setting up. And this goes, and this is again important because this is going to be used in the post processing part where it's going to generate the G code and that's going to be based on the input that we put here. So the question always comes up, well, how do I calculate feeds and speeds? Well, I, I can tell you that Onsrud in their catalog, and you can get their catalog free online, has a really good feeds and speeds um, component on how to calculate feeds and speeds. And as a matter of fact, there is a module that we've created that's available on guitarbuilding.org on CNC feeds and speeds. And so that goes through that process of how to calculate what the feed and speed rate should be uh, based on the number of teeth that you have and, or excuse me, the number of cutting edges that you have um, and a, a specific profile that you're looking for uh, in terms of how much wood to take out which each pass of that cutter head. So the cutting feed rate, we're going to use the 60 inches per minute. And the lead in and lead out and ramp feeds are all going to be 30 inches per minute. And again, the idea is that you can go slightly slower on these to be a little bit safer if that is a, a situation that you're unsure of. Uh, and again, the plunge rate, we're going to go 30 inches per minute on the plunge rate. So the cutting feed rate at 60 inches per minute, um, that's f so this cutter is going to cut 5 feet long in 1 minute time. Now, could it be faster? Could it be slower? Well, if you find that you would like to increase the the speed rate you can always come back to the tool and edit the tool to increase your cutting feed rate. Um, the spindle speed is going to be determined by whether you have a variable speed spindle or a router which is a fixed speed or a multi-speed router and so the combination of spindle or router speed and the cutting feed rate will then determine things like your tool life and whether or not you get good chip size and as I said the Onsred catalog has some really nice calculation components. Post processor. We're going to definitely turn the coolant off. We don't need any coolant. However the numbers that are associated here um, this is used if you have a automatic tool changer, if you're going to put this in a specific location on that tool changer, uh, you can change that value. And so this case for our system uh, that we're setting up for, it is a uh, cutting tool number of two. Typically you'll have it as one, especially if you're manual, this does not apply. Now the length offset and the diameter offset uh, component, the those are numeric values and what that allows you to do is set up different setups for the same tool. So if you want to use this quarter inch cutter to, to then drill holes later, you would want to set up a different uh, length offset, diameter offset uh, value and so that allows you to have multiple setups for the same tool. And we're going to go ahead and put a comment that this tool is used for profiling. We'll choose OK. So now you have a cutting tool in your library and this is a quarter inch cutter that we're going to use for the profiling process. And so we're going to wrap this video up here. The next video is going to take us down the next path of creating the geometry for the cutting the profile and then going through the post-processing uh, process. So have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.